Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus is worthy of it all. Amen? Our Lord is worthy of everything and anything that we can afford. Amen, church? Does the Lord deserve all the glory? Amen? Amen? Amen. Hello? I think that's only one-fourth of the room. Does the Lord deserve all the glory? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good and blessed uh, morning to each and every one of us. And once again, we gladly welcome you to Christ is our Rock Church Ministries International. And in short, we welcome you to the work of the Lord this morning. And uh, as a church, as a family, we are very blessed. We are very blessed that uh, all of us uh, have been given the opportunity to gather here today. Uh, we are blessed that uh, the Lord has allowed us this Sunday to gather here today. Amen. Are you blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. We are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Wow, uh, glory to God in the highest. Uh, it's really very blessed to um, see new, uh, a lot of new faces, multitudes of new faces. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I don't know, we made a roll call earlier on, but a lot of people has been added. Um, uh, I believe that, well, we welcome our uh, family and friends from the... Uh, Aldershot Filipino community. Hallelujah. And the new sets of officers are here. Can we uh, please give the Lord a clap for their lives? Amen. And uh, I believe that the community of Aldershot are well represented here today. Amen. Where are the Aldershot people? Please uh, raise their hands. Let's. Wow. Hallelujah. And. Uh, of course, the local uh, community of Alton are well represented here today as well. Who are uh, from Alton? Yay! Um, and we have a family as far as uh, Stratford from Avon, the Ledisma family. Yes! Glory to God in the highest for your life. Um, uh, the family of uh, Clinton from uh, Headley Down. A very picturesque part of uh, Hampshire. Welcome. And uh, our family from Bordon. Yay. Amen. Anyone? Uh, Basing Stock. Where is our uh, Basing Stock? Um, and if I please, uh, if we can please know uh, where are all the rest coming from? Farnborough. Farnborough. Yes. Uh, we are blessed to be with the people of the Lord from Farnborough. Hallelujah. And we know Andy's parents from Aldershot, yeah? Not unless you moved the last week or so. <laughs> Hallelujah. How about uh, Terry, your uh, visitors and friend? Where are they from? Bognor Regis. Oh, Bognor Regis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bognor Regis. Hallelujah. That's a very nice beach in that area. Hallelujah. And... Uh, Oh, from the kingdom of Nepal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Most gracious Lord and heavenly Father, indeed, we cannot give emphasis enough that your son Jesus Christ is the only reason for this season. It's the only reason that we are even gathering this Sunday, Father God, and we thank you so much. Truly indeed, Lord, you are manifesting your abundant grace and mercy by the presence of each and everyone here. Amidst, Father God, of uh, the difficult weather, amidst, Father God, of the flu virus that has visited the country once again. But Lord, thank you for gathering your people here in this place for gathering your children here in this place. Not just to celebrate, not just to come to service, but to once again, Lord, be reminded that you are indeed the reason, not only of this season, but of our existence. We thank you so much. Father, 
We thank you for the lives of all your ministers, all your children from the youngest to the eldest that you have used this morning. Thank you, Lord, for their desire. Thank you for their heart. Thank you for their service, Father God, that is offered to you and for your people. Lord, as we continue, we ask, we pray, Father God, that you continue to give us revelation on how, Father God, to improve our walk with you here on this earth. On how, Father God, that we may, through your words, Lord, abide on your purposes and plans in the life of each and every one. And Lord, we welcome the power of your Holy Spirit to empower these words that will be preached upon this pulpit so that each and every hearers, Lord, will spring forth a faith, will spring forth a life, will spring forth a healing if some are in need of, Lord, as well as people who are online. Father God, we remember in our hearts and in our thoughts, our members, our families, our friends, our colleagues, our acquaintances who won't be able to be here today because of an illness, because of being under the weather. Lord, we continue to profess and proclaim your power and authority, the declaration of healing and deliverance wherever they may be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You give a smile to your uh, seatmates, neighbor next to you. Have you said hello to them yet? Have you um, uh, uh, asked how they are? But anyway, later on, we will have plenty of time to um, uh, do that as well. Amen. And once again, we welcome you to the house of the Lord. We welcome you to the work and the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The passage that the Lord gave us today, if you have your Bible, uh, please open them in the uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Um, uh, chapter 2 usually or traditionally is the place or where you can find where Jesus Christ was born, was foretold, was prophesied. Amen. But uh, for today's Christmas service, um, I think we are very familiar with that story. So we will try to fast track a little bit. We'll start when the time that Jesus Christ was eight years old, uh, eight days old. Jesus Christ was born and the story picked up when he was eight days old. In verse 21, it says in there, And when eight days were completed, the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Amen. Wow. According to the old Hebrew tradition, all male firstborn are called holy to the Lord. Who are the first male born in here? Anyone? Anyone? All the first male born. The Hebrew calls you holy to the Lord. Amen? But glory to God in the highest because I call you all holy to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Have you ever heard of Simeon during Christmas? Have you ever heard of him? He's actually a part of the Christmas uh, characters, but it seems that he's not very familiar. Some of us probably, this is the first time that we will hear the name Simeon 
attributed or associated during Christmas. But remember, this is Jesus eight days old. Amen? So whose name was Simeon? And this man was a just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Holy Spirit to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the customs of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all the people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Amen. So as a recap, my dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus Christ was a newly born, when Jesus Christ was a baby, his parents, as we know, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple to dedicate Jesus to the Lord. Amen? And today, there are, uh, we will be having a dedication as well. Amen? So it's, it coincides. Amen? So baby Jesus was brought to the temple for the very first time to be dedicated to the Lord. And on that time, there was a man called Simeon that is a devout Christian, that is a righteous believer who, the Bible says, goes to church every Sunday. But the Holy Spirit promised to Simeon that Simeon, you will not die unless you see the Savior. You will not die unless you see salvation. And so it happens that on a one Sunday, the passage says the Holy Spirit led Simeon to church. And that is the time as well that the baby Jesus was being brought to be dedicated to the Lord. And there and then, the moment that how many babies were brought to the temple to be dedicated during Simeon's time. But when baby Jesus was brought to the temple for the very first time to be dedicated, the Holy Spirit led Simeon, showed it to Simeon that, Simeon, this is the promised salvation to you. We don't know how old is Simeon that time. But Simeon accepted the promise and with joy and thanksgiving in his heart. What did he do? When he saw the baby Jesus being brought to the temple, he approached the parents. We don't know if by default he knew the parents. Probably not. That the moment that he saw baby Jesus, the Holy Spirit led him to take the baby and thank the Lord and acknowledge that Lord... You are very good to your servant. Lord, your servant now can rest in peace because I have seen your promised salvation. Because I have seen the reason of this season. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, we are not going to dwell much on the character of Simeon because we know that Simeon is someone who persevered waiting for the promise of the Lord. We're not going to talk about the quality and nature of faith of Simeon because the Bible says that Simeon is upright, is strong, and devout believer. Instead, we are going to look into the promise revealed to him by God, the Holy Spirit. And what is that promise, my dear brothers and sisters? Simeon, you will not die until you see salvation. Amen, church? 
The word of the Lord in Hebrews 9.27, it says in here that you and me and all of us, we are all destined to die once. And after that, here comes the coming judgment. Amen? Do we believe in the word of the Lord? Amen. And if we do believe in the word of the Lord, then the word of the Lord says that you and me and each and every one of us Death will come. Death will be inevitable. We cannot avoid death in coming. And to say the least, it comes at our least unexpected time. To say the least, we cannot even prepare for it to some. One might be on the way to church, one might be in the way to work, one might be in the way home, and they met and their untimely death. Mommy, mommy. Some of us probably will die a natural cause, whether you are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years of age. Some of us will probably not die of natural old age. Or some of us probably will die of unnatural like accidents in incidences. Is that the reality of life? Do you agree? Is that the reality of life? Especially this season. For many of us, we were so excited of this Christmas coming. Especially the, the past two or three years the, during the peak of COVID where most of us, it seems that virtually there, were, there was no Christmas. But this year's Christmas, we are all excited because we said that, yes, after the last two or three years, we can celebrate Christmas with security, health, we are vaccinated. But how many of us these last two weeks or how many of the people that you know have been afflicted of this um, flu, seasonal flu. Anyone? I myself just been recovering from a week-long bout against this seasonal flu. So my dear brothers and sisters, there is nothing secured. What would you like to happen? As a default, you know my dear brothers and sisters, Everyone who is being born as a default, that baby begin to live by the promises. And as that baby turned one, two, and up until you are 90s, 100, every single person is living by the virtue of promise as a default. When you are pregnant, moms, why do you look after yourself too much? Why do you have to take vitamins? Why do you have to eat well, sleep, uh, sleep well? Why do you have to do that? Because of the promise that you are likely to have a healthier baby. Amen? Children, babies, why do we look after them? Why do we give them vaccination? Why do we do everything that we do? Because of the promise that if we treat a baby well, they are likely to grow up healthy and well. Why do we send our children to school? Why does these children stay long hours of revising, studying? Because of a promise that if you do that, they will have a brighter and brighter future. Why do you treat your partners, your wives, your husband accordingly? Because of the promise that there is order if you do so. Why do we come to church? Because of the promise that when we exercise our faith in the Lord, that we know that we are in a better standing with the Lord after this. So my dear brothers and sisters, Everything in this world from the smallest detail to the biggest 
It's all driven by a promise. Amen? <coughs> Do you believe? Do you agree? Amen. So what would you like to happen? What would you be ready to happen? No? Is there an element in your life that you can control? Is there an aspect in there that you can influence? Yes is the answer. We have given all those examples. But my dear brothers and sisters, if you focus on those examples, if you focus on everything that we are doing, those are all to provide for the promise of this physical body, of this natural body, of which we know that this natural body, according to the Bible, will not last longer than 120 years. Of which we know that the moment that when one dies, and we say it's inevitable, what happens to this physical body that we are preparing so hard for? It goes to the ground. It will decay. It will return to earth. Amen? Amen? How about the bigger question? We have gone the extra mile of preparing for this natural body. We have gone the extra mile of preparing for this flesh that when it is buried, it will decay and return to the ground. How about for our soul. And this is the bigger question for us. What have we been doing Mommy. to prepare for that soul man? What have we been preparing? I mean, whether you are a believer or not, the Bible says your spirit will return to the Lord because it is the Lord that is the giver of that spirit. Amen? But how about your soul? Our soul that is tainted with sin by default. What are we doing to prepare for this soul? We have prepared well enough for this body, for this physical that will decay. But how about this soul that will go on and live for eternity? The word of the Lord encourages us in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 that says, Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both your soul and your body in hell. It says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, don't be afraid of the illness, don't be afraid of... Uh, of um, uh, the weather, don't be afraid of anything that can afflict your physical. Because that weather, that illness has no power to afflict your soul. But be afraid of him who can afflict both your body and your soul. And it talks about our Lord. Because it is only the Lord that can afflict our soul. My dear brothers and sisters, the real essence of Christmas is found in John 3, 16 to 18. For God so loved the world. Amen? Do we believe that God so loved the world? Amen. At once we were unlovable. At once we do not deserve the love of the Lord. At once... We are the darkest and deepest sinner that we could have been. But the Lord loved us anyway. Christmas came because, what is Christmas by the way? What we are celebrating in Christmas? The birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So in John 3.16, it says in there that for God so loved the world that he allowed Christmas to come. Amen. For God so loved the world that he allowed Christmas to come. That he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, 
but have eternal life. That whosoever believe in Him, his soul will not be afflicted, it says in here. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, pay attention, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Amen, church. Christmas came in order for God to fashion and manifest His love to humanity. Christmas came in order for His Son Jesus Christ to be born. Christmas came in order for us sinner people to have that opportunity to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas came in order for us sinner to have our to have that opportunity for our soul to be spared in eternal suffering after this life. Amen church. So that's the reason why we are celebrating the new year today. Amen? Amen. You're not listening. It's Christmas. <laughs> See? You, you're not paying attention. You are not listening. Amen? So Christmas came. So that all of us will have the opportunity. So in effect, my dear brothers and sisters, <coughs> Christmas came so that the same promise given to Simeon will be available to all of us. Amen? Amen. Because we said that by default, we cannot avoid death. It is destined for one man to die and after that judgment. However fast you run, you cannot outrun death it will inevitably come to us. It will come to us. But my dear brothers and sisters, in the midst of that, there is that promise of Christmas. Just like the promise given to Simeon, that to each and every one of us in here, there is the promise that you will not die unless you see salvation. Amen. Amen. You will not die unless you see salvation. And the Bible says, on a regular Sabbath, the Holy Spirit led Simeon to church. And my dear brothers and sisters, I know and I do believe that it is not by accident or coincidence that we are here today. That we are listening to this message today. For the members, of course, it's probably to us, our regular Sunday worship service. But for the others, you've probably been invited by your family, by your loved one, by your friends, by your acquaintances, by your colleagues. But whatever the reason, the purpose that initiate you coming here, I know and I do believe that just as Simeon on that first Weekend after Christmas, eight days old. So it's the first weekend after Christmas. Mommy, mommy. That the Holy Spirit led Simeon to church to fulfill the promise given to Simeon that Simeon, you will not die until you see salvation. And same with you, my dear brothers and sisters. It is not an accident or coincidence that you are gathered here today, that we have come here today. I know and I do believe that there is that intervention of the Holy Spirit that is at work upon the life of each and everyone so that in this Christmas, for the very first time, we will hear about the story of Simeon. We will hear about the promise given to the Lord to Simeon that Simeon, you will not die until you see salvation. Amen, Amen church? Amen. Amen. Amen? You probably did not expect to hear somebody talking about death on Christmas. But the Holy Spirit 
is bringing us slowly, slowly, and drawing us slowly, slowly in His kingdom. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to encourage us all one thing, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord says, For God so loved the world, everyone in the world, just as God loves Simeon, He loves you and me with equal measure. Just as God promised Simeon, Simeon, you will not die until you see salvation. The Lord is giving that promise to you. From here to there, from here to there, people online, the promise of the Lord to us is the same. You have the opportunity not to uh, uh, reach your demise without being saved. Amen? Mommy, mommy. Amen, church. Amen. We have gone the extra mile to prepare for our physical body. Why can't we not take that leap of faith to secure and prepare our soul. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We're not preaching about baby Jesus here. We are preaching about the Son of God. Amen. The Son of God who came on that first Christmas. The Son of God who, uh, who Dia said earlier, who was born, who lived, who died, who was crucified on the cross, who redeemed our sin, who rose again to satisfy and fulfill the scripture for God to prove that I am all-powerful. I was able to raise Jesus Christ on the cross. Did you know that it was the Holy Spirit who rose Jesus Christ from the cross? God can do that to you. God can do that to you. However you may feel alive right now, if you have not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Bible calls you by default dead. So my dear brothers and sisters, for this Christmas, let's have that opportunity to receive salvation, to receive life. Amen. Again, we're not presenting baby Jesus. We are presenting the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. And I want to ask you to take him. I want to ask you to embrace Jesus Christ right now. Embrace salvation right now. Let us not delay. The promise of the Lord to Simeon is, Simeon, you will not die unless you see salvation. What happened if Simeon did not acknowledge that that baby was the salvation? Then the promise would have gone futile. My dear brothers and sisters, do not allow the promise of the Lord to go futile and without effect in your life. Receive Jesus Christ now. That's the irony of things. We know that all of us will perish, but what we do not know is when it will come. My dear brothers and sisters, even if you are the, the best gambler, the odds are not in you. You don't know when will it come. Amen? But today, this is the day that when you enter this house of God, when you hear about the message about Jesus, when you've seen it illustrated and being presented to you, again, not the baby Jesus, but Jesus, the Lord, Jesus, the God, just as Simeon did, why don't you embrace Jesus? Why don't you grab hold of Jesus? Why don't you receive that salvation right now? Amen? Why don't you say that, Lord, now I can live in peace? You know, most of the time, we are a very good liar. Even I, myself, 
I learned that the hard way. If I know someone dies, you know, we are very quick to say, rest in peace. How sure are you that they are resting in peace? Amen. As a default, if someone dies, we told the family, we told the people, rest in peace. He is in a better situation now. How sure are you? Did you know that that person has a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ when he was living? But right now, my dear brothers and sisters, we do not have to lie. If one received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, and if you die, and if we say rest and peace, we are not lying. Amen. 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 So receive the Lord Jesus Christ now. Take the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Take the Lord Jesus as your salvation and you can truly live in peace because we have seen that salvation. We have received the glory of that salvation. Amen? <coughs> I have only one goal and one agenda today and I have to confess my goal and agenda today, my dear brothers and sisters, is to ruin your Christmas. Yes, if you don't accept Jesus Christ today, your Christmas is ruined. If this is the last time, even if you say that, ah, I'm not gonna return to that church because that pastor, that preacher is not very good. I'm not going to return to that church. Okay. Uh, we can agree to disagree. If this is your last time coming to church or this is your last time coming into this church, I want to poke you so deep that it will haunt you for the rest of your life so that one day when we stand in the presence of God, you cannot point your fingers at me and say, you could have tried harder. This is the reason why that I shout. Even if it's difficult after a week-long boat of flu. This is the reason why that I preach in a loud voice. This is the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that I do not want to win your best preacher or your best pastor award because my desire is for your soul to be saved. Because my desire is to poke you so hard that you will realize that you are in need of God. Christmas came in order for God to show humanity His love. Christmas came in order for humanity to recognize their luck. Christmas came in order for us to have a second chance at life. My dear brothers and sisters, it is by default that you and me will pass away. <clears throat> and nothing in this world will remain. The word of the Lord says, everything in this world will pass away. But the good news is, the Lord can make everything new. Amen. Including you. Amen, church? Amen. The promise of the Lord to Simeon is, you will not pass away without seeing salvation. How many of us in here wants to receive the same promise? How many of us in here wants to receive the same reassurance? Amen? Amen. Church, if you are unwell, if you are ill, mommy, mommy. and the GP says, oh, you take this paracetamol, you take this antibiotics, what do you do? You take it, you purchase even without Money, you ask others to purchase it because you believe in that promise. Amen. Amen. But my dear brothers and sisters, it is being preached in this pulpit that none of us is exempted. We are in need of a God. We are in need of a Savior. We are in need of a deliverer. Whoever you are, whatever part of divide in the society you belong you are in need of a Savior, my dear brothers and sisters. This is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. 
the decision of will you embrace Christ or will you reject Him? Will you come to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry, Lord. I surrender my life to you, Lord. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, it reminds me that very tragic story. Titanic was the largest ship ever built. And on its maiden voyage, people on board the Titanic were three class. The rich, the poor, and the middle class. <coughs> but when it reached an accident in the middle of the sea, and lifeboats are arriving in the shore, there are only two types of people. The saved and the lost. While we are living here in this world, there are a lot of divides in life. There are the educated, there are the uneducated. We are divided by race. We are divided by culture. We are divided by gender. We are divided. Now, the world is divided more than as it has ever been. But after this life, there are only two types of people. The saved and the lost. Where would you be? Amen. Can I ask each and everyone to stand up? <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. I pray that the same spirit that lead Simeon to church that morning is the same Holy Spirit that led us to church this morning. And I pray that it is the same spirit that is hovering upon us right now. Anyone who is standing in this room today and as well as people who are joining us online. There is a promise of the Lord that none of us, neither of us, will die until we see salvation. And why don't we say, Lord, I came this far. My heart beats faster. There's a call and I sense that I need to give up my life to Christ. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, why don't we take that opportunity to give up our life for Christ? Christ, or God, gave up His Son for us. And the Son, Jesus Christ, gave up His life for us. Is it too much to give back by giving Him our life? Some of us probably says, I'm tired of changing myself. I'm, try, I'm tired of trying it on my own. I'm tired of making promises that I keep breaking. I'm tired of keep on trying to improve, but keeps on failing. I'm tired of having a condition that only Christ can deal with. This time, I'm ready to be saved. I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to return. Amen, church? Not only Jesus was born and we celebrate, but today, Jesus wants to be born in you. Or to some of us who step back, Jesus wants to be reborn in you. So when I count to three, if you're one of these two categories, if you want Jesus to be born in you, or if you want Jesus to be reborn in you, at the count of three, if you are one of this category, I just want you to just take the leap of faith. Take that offered promise of salvation and just raise up your hands. Don't think about 
what the other people next to you are thinking about because at the end of the day, they cannot justify for you. They cannot even lower and lobby for your salvation when you are standing in the presence of our holy God. So my dear brothers and sisters, can I ask each and everyone, all eyes closed, count people of God, let's not cheat each other. All eyes closed, all eyes closed, and at the count of three, if you want Jesus Christ to be born in your life, if you want Jesus Christ to be reborn in your life, I want you to raise those hands. And if you are watching live stream and you do not stand right with the Lord, I want you to raise your hands. One, two, three. All eyes closed. Let's not kid ourselves. All eyes closed. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I believe that the Lord is working to a uh, few of our ministers around. Just, just move around, ministers, and pray. Pray for people. Usher people to receive the salvation that the Lord promised. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, especially if you're doing this for the first time, wag kayong mahiya. Don't be ashamed. This is the perfect place to do so because you are surrounded by people who can understand you. If you do that outside in the community, people won't know, people won't understand. People will judge you. But in here, I myself, standing and talking to you the last hour, believe that I am not exempted. Believe and receive that I am a sinner and I am in need of that salvation. That I fall short miserably in the eyes of my God and is therefore need life in salvation. Hallelujah. People of God, please room around and pray. There are people in here that are in need of prayer. People of God, if the Lord is leading you to go around and pray for people, Sister Rochelle, please help. Hallelujah. Sister Alice, please help. Room around and pray for people. There are multitudes in here. Come on, Charlene. Move around and pray. Hudia, move around and pray. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. There are multitudes in here. There are multitudes in here. This is not the work of the church. This is the work of the Lord. Let us lay down the divides of the boundary. Let us lay down the measure that has divided us for so long. Let us be one in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, pour out the reason of this season. Pour out salvation upon your people, O God. Pour out redemption upon your people, Lord. Just as the promise that Simon received on that first Sunday after Christmas, that Lord, thank you for the promise salvation. Thank you for the promise redemption. People of God, come and just raise your hands. Just say, Lord, I am in need. All eyes closed. Lord, I am in need. Father, I am desperately in need of your Son. Come on, everyone. We need to make that decision right now. We need to receive Jesus Christ right now. Don't worry about what people next to you think. Today is the day. Today is the time that we are putting Christ back to Christmas. 
when you accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior.
Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I am compelled to say I apologize for the lengthy service, but my dear brothers and sisters, there is no more precious than the lives and the soul and the salvation of each and every one. Because the Lord says, how precious are the souls and life of each and every one that God was willing to trade the life of His Son Jesus Christ for us. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. Thank you. And if some of you are in need of prayer, we can continue this later on. And Father God, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to have our eyes open, to be able to see and recognize the same promise given to your servant Simon that none of those people gathered here today, none of those people joining us online will see the fullness of their time without first seeing salvation, without first receiving salvation. And thank you, Lord, because by faith, that's what you have just done right now to the life of each and every single one of us, regardless of they have been prayed for or not. Because, Lord, you are all-knowing. You are all-seeing God. You see the heart and the mind of your people. Lord, accept this small token and gratitude of faith, asking you, Jesus, Come into our lives. Saturate our lives. Rule our lives. Jesus, we receive you as our personal Lord and Savior. Jesus, we receive you as our master. Jesus, we receive you as our captain. Jesus, we receive you as our future. Jesus, we receive you as our salvation. Jesus, we receive you as our Christmas. May the fullness of the power in the miracle of your mercy, your grace, in love, O Father, be upon all your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us give the Lord the best clap offering that we can afford. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I receive your salvation. I receive your promise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We can all be seated. And uh, if we jump quickly to the next part of our service, I believe we will finish earlier. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. No? Uh, just as in our passage, in verse 22, the parents of Jesus Christ bought Jesus Christ in the temple to be dedicated. So today we are... Uh, dedicating two children as well. And my dear brothers and sisters, uh, dedication is a Christian ceremony that dedicates the children to God and welcome them into the church. During this ceremony, the parents and their chosen godparents and the church in its entirety are also being dedicated in raising and guiding the child as a believer. Amen? So, if we look at the Bible, we can see a vast historical account of child dedication. Uh, just a correction, we are not uh, baptizing because uh, a baby or a child baptism in the Bible, uh, there are no documents of any child baptism or child uh, uh, baptism in the Bible. But we, here at Seor, we uh, dedicate the children to the Lord. Amen? Amen? 
Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. So, um, uh, <coughs> Lord, hallelujah. So, um, we dedicate the children rather than baptizing them. Just as the many accounts in the Bible that children were brought to the Lord to be dedicated according to biblical customs. Because we believe that child dedication uh, closely resemblance, uh, resemble the biblical pattern than child baptism. No? Therefore, child dedication does not uh, profess repentance, does not impart faith, nor forgive the sins of the child. The child, when he is old enough, can understand about faith and the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ can freely choose to surrender their life to Christ after which a baptism is conducted. Amen? So therefore, to imitate the example uh, laid out in the Bible, we are going to do a child uh, dedication today. Amen po? So uh, can I invite please the parents? Nino and uh, Ses and uh, to bring the children in front. And uh, yeah, here, yung isa dito, yung isa dito. And can I please invite, have you brought with you your closest families, relatives? No, I haven't seen Ate Abilina. <laughs> Were you just coming from Waitrose or? Your, 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 your closest relative and all the, uh, uh, the sponsors that you have invited, please stand here. Sige, all the sponsors that were invited to uh, uh, stand for the children. We're not putting a divide here, but all, all the males stand on the left side and the females here on the right, please. Come back. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Yeah, invite your visitors, Terry, or your prince. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise. Hallelujah. In Psalms chapter 127, verses 3 to 5, it says in there that children are heritage from the Lord and offspring are a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, are children born in one's youth. So the Bible is talking about you and talking about you. Okay? Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Marami yata si Nino rito. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in the court. Mark chapter 10 verses 13 to 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for Him to place His hands on them. But his disciples rebuked him. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Truly I tell you, anyone who will receive, he will not receive the kingdom of God is like a child will not never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Hallelujah. Parents, lahat po tayo, we are all, uh, all the parents in the room, your children are precious and blessings from God. 
Yes, we can give our children all sorts of nice things. But there is that one need that only God can give. And that is life eternal. This morning, we are dedicating the family of uh, Nino Ronnie Balbarino and uh, Ses Lidisma. We are dedicating their children, Enzo Balbarino and uh, Phil Basil Napoleon Balbarino. And as a parents, Nino and Ses, you are publicly declaring that you want to raise Enzo and Napoleon in a Christ honoring home environment and you are asking God's blessing on your ministry as a Christian parents. Nino and says, raising a child in faith is not done independently. This is the reason why the parents has called in the godparents, the witnesses, or co-parents we call you. The witness, the church, the congregation to help each other. Recognizing the responsibility in nurturing a child in faith. Galatians 6.2, it says in there, share each other's burden and in this way we obey the law of Christ. There is a famous saying that it takes a community to raise a child. Amen. And we all are part of that community. And we all have a part in raising these two children in our community. Not only them, but so us, your children, who were previously dedicated and who will be pre uh, dedicated in the future. Hallelujah. So, uh, this is... Um, uh, Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Nino. Yes. Full name? Uh, Nino Ron Balbarino. Amen. And this is uh, partner? Hi, my name is Cecily Desma. Their children? Oh, you can introduce yourself. It's Enzo Balbarino. Okay. And in behalf of uh, Napoleon? Um, this is Phil Basil Napoleon Balbarino. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Okay. So, dito kayong dalawa. Okay, so, uh, says in Nino, you have brought Enzo and Napoleon before us today to publicly dedicate them to the Lord. We have a series of questions to ask you and please affirm your desire by answering each of them, we will. No? Answering these questions, you are making promises to God, not to the people here around, not to the church, not to Enzo, and not to Napoleon, but to God. So parents, will you accept your God-given responsibility to raise your children in a Christ-centered home. We will. Parents, will you teach and discipline them in your home so that you are not solely dependent on the church or the school system to impart biblical knowledge in spiritual values to them? We will. Parents, will you not assume that your careers, peer approval, social status, financial capabilities are the highest goals in life, but rather what will advance the cause of Christ in the life of these children? We will. We will. Parents, will you not make your life choices based on secular trends nor material gains, but rather 
will you make your life choices based on what will benefit and strengthen the faith of your family? We will. Nino, this is for you. As Enzo and Napoleon's earthly father, will you give them the time and attention and affection that shows the nature of their father in heaven? I will. Okay, and says this is for you. Says, as Enzo and Napoleon's earthly mother, will you give them the special attachment that they craves from you and the special nurturing touch that you are uniquely gifted by God to I give will. them? Hallelujah. Let's uh, extend our hands to them. Let's extend our hands to them. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you for entrusting Enzo and Napoleon to Nenyo and Ses as a gift. They acknowledge that they belong to you. Just as like Hannah offered her son Samuel and Mary and Joseph offered their son Jesus Christ in you. Help them as a parent's Lord with their weakness and imperfection, offering their children unto you, entrusting the lives of their children unto you, entrusting their future unto you, knowing that everything is in the power of your capable hands. Father, we pray that you continue to guide them and that you continue to lead them in bringing up these children according to your words, according to your law, Father, and according to the mandate given to them by this world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, we can pass the mic to the godparents for a representative. And uh, godparents, uh, this is all for you. You have accepted Ninos and uh, Ses' request for you to be godparents to Enzo and Napoleon. We have a series of questions to ask you. And please reaffirm your desires by answering each of them, we will. Amen po? Yes? Hallelujah. God parents, in accepting this role, will you regularly pray for Nenyo, says in their children? God parents, in close relations to this family, will you conduct your lives in a way that reinforce the biblical values that Enzo and Napoleon is taught in their homes? Yeah. Parents, in your will you do Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We lift up the lives of all their godparents to you, Father God. Lord, there is the reason. There is a divine purpose why you have chosen them to be the godparents of these children, Father God. For whatever relationship and attachment that they can trace to this family, that Lord, we know and we do believe that that stronger cord that binds them is the unity and the power that comes from your love. Lord, we pray we entrust and we surrender these godparents unto you, that Lord, help them to live by the Christian virtues, 
that you are encouraging them to practice and pass on to the lives of these children. Father God, the path may become obscure, Lord, but we pray that when that obscurity comes, you can raise up the lives of these godparents to step up, to help, to provide, and to support for this family. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And uh, this is for all of us, for the congregation. Uh, it is not an accident and coincidence that you are here. You are also here to be uh, a witness. Amen. To bear witness on this child dedication. So uh, can I ask each and every one of us, if we are willing to be that witness, let's just raise our hands, all of us. Amen. As a community, as a community, as a church, we are invited to be a witness. So community, if you are in agreement with this, after this question, I want you to say, we will. So the community of the Lord, will you as a community of faith support this family, Nino, Cesc, Enzo, and Napoleon by the Christian love and example you set by your lives? Hallelujah. Let's pray for all of you. Lord, we pray that this community, your church, will deeply rooted and established in your love. May your power be evidently flow upon your holy people, this church, and this community. May this community grasp how wide and long, and how high and how deep is your love, that we may be able to impart and channel that love towards this family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. All the godparents, let's gather, let's, uh, uh, let's get some oil and uh, let's uh, put our hands uh, to the family. So, dito kayo. So let's gather, let's uh, lay our hands to them. Okay, if you have no space, you can gather around. If you have no space, lay hands the back of the uh, brother or a sister behind you. Hallelujah. And church, can I invite us all as well to extend our hands in the front. Okay, let's let us pray. Hallelujah. Lord, together with the parents, the family and the godparents, the witnesses, your community and your church, we dedicate to you our dearly beloved Enzo Balbarino. And Phil Basel Napoleon Balbarino. Send your Holy Spirit daily to lead, to guide, and to counsel them. Always assess them to grow in wisdom and stature, and grace and knowledge, and kindness, compassion, and love. May these children serve you faithfully with their whole heart devotedly to you all the days of their life. May they discover the joy of your presence through their daily relationship with your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that Enzo and Napoleon's heart, like seed sown on good soil, will hear your words, accept it, and produce a crop a hundred times what was sown. Blessed 
them throughout their life, allow them to experience and be an example of what a living life of obedience to you looks like. We pray that may they find their joy in you alone. Our dearly beloved Enzo Valvarino and Phil Basin Napoleon Valvarino, may the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord God make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you His peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Congratulations to the family. Congratulations to all the uh, witnesses, to all the second parents. And uh, congratulations, Church, for being a witness to this uh, wonderful testimony. Hallelujah. Sige, we can go back to our places. And uh, let's just... Um, Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Okay. Um, do you know what the good news is, my dear brothers and sisters? This is only the part one. We have a part two next week. So uh, you are all invited to return next week. And the promise is, um, uh, we will, uh, there will be more of us next week. So uh, if we turn up, there will be more of us next week. Amen. Um, before we go to the second part, um, can I just ask each and everyone to let's remain in the presence of the Lord. Um, Father God, um, we cannot thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough, Father God. We cannot even express the joy in our hearts. But Lord, with that honest small voice in us, we thank you so much that you have allowed us to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, may the fullness of your power, your glory and grace be upon all the people whom you have gathered here today, including all the people that are joining us online. Lord, we continue to entrust unto you the second half of our celebration. Holy Spirit, continue to manifest, continue to minister upon the life of each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.